Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Kelly. I am here with two guests, John Connolly and Sean Litt from Conversant. Guys, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. I had the pleasure of visiting you in your offices last year and got to know a little bit about Conversant and some of the things you're doing from an analytical perspective. But for our audience who may not be as familiar with Conversant, maybe John, could you give a quick quick overview of Conversant and what you guys do? Sure, Conversant Media, first and foremost, we, uh, we're an ad serving company and uh, you know we have a very different approach than everyone else in the marketplace. That is, we want to be uh, data driven in everything that we do and really you know, make sure that we are putting the relevant ad in front of the relevant consumer. Right, and that's obviously a, a data problem, a data challenge. Talk a little bit about how you accomplish that and the role Greenfilm plays. Uh, sure, so you know, our uh, main data warehousing platform is on a Greenfilm um, uh, cluster, uh, and we've built a lot of extensibility into that. So uh, you know, if you want to think of a, a hub and spoke architecture, Greenplum is the hub. We put everything that we can capture as an enterprise data asset, anything that we need to run our business in the center of this picture. And then Greenplum basically feeds everything else that we do uh, with our data set anywhere. And so all the rich data that we capture from online interactions, all of the um, uh, you know, anonymized uh, first party data that's been sent into our system. Uh, we centralize it all into Greenplum and then we make sure that it gets anywhere it needs to be to, to run our operation. Mm -hmm. And Sean, how does that translate into products that you serve your customers? Who are some of your customers, generally speaking, and what kind of products and services are you delivering based on the analytics that you're doing with Greenplum? So we're doing a lot of mining, uh, generating audiences uh, on behalf of our customers, retail customers, financial customers, uh, whoever wants to advertise on the internet. Uh, we'll send that uh, those audiences to our ad serving platforms, to our decisioning platforms um, for messaging. Great. And in terms of, you mentioned extensibility, and of course the marketplace is changing constantly, and I'm sure you're looking to develop new products and services for your customers. I wonder if you could talk about how Greenplum's approach to analytics, it being software-based, uh, highly extensible, those kinds of things, how does that help you then develop new services and capabilities uh, as you know, the market demands them? Sure. Well, you know, speed to market is, is definitely huge. Again, having that centralized data asset is very important to our business model that we can run you know, uh, deep uh, mining on you know, advanced analytics. Uh, you know, we have a, a large contingent of PhDs and decision scientists who are uh, constantly working on that platform uh, and really using, you know, uh, uh, changing algorithms all the time and really trying to you know, uh, investigate, uh, you know, just how, you know, um, how much data that we've captured there. And you know, when a lot of people talk about big data platforms, it can mean different things to different people. Uh, for us, you know, uh, a big data platform is one that captures over 200 billion events daily, right? And that you know, we have to actually really uh, you know, constantly be you know, mining that set to figure out you know, what, where's the signal and where's the noise. And Greenplum is just a key piece of our infrastructure for doing that. Right, I was gonna ask if you can give us some sense of the scale that you're talking about, and I think uh, 200 billion. 200 billion. It's a real number. Uh, yes. Events. That, that's quite a bit. Um, so, of course, we're here at the Postgres conference, and within that, we've got the Green Plum Summit. Uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the open source uh, element of Green Plum. Uh, is that an important part of why you chose Green Plum? What role maybe the community plays? Obviously, you're here, so you're playing a part in the community <laughs> yourself. Um, could you talk a little bit about that, Sean? I'll be honest, right? When we decided to go with Green Plum, Green Plum was not open source, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and we are ecstatic that it has become open source. Uh, you know, uh, there, there's a lot to be said, and we, we do leverage uh, the, the Postgres back, background of Green Plum. Uh, we, we've been able to extend the platform because of that background. We've been able to integrate uh, more deeply than uh, otherwise we would be able to. Uh, but, uh, you know, we think that there's a lot of uh, new opportunities, uh, new things that we can learn of how better to use our platform, uh, how better to integrate our platform into our stack uh, because of its open source uh, nature and, and uh, our ability to really help make it a better product. I would just add to that that the you know, some of the extendable uh, features of the platform uh, have really enabled us to be able to put a robust data lake in where Greenplum is the center of it, but really we have a deep interaction and engagement with uh, our HDFS instance that allows us to really have our enterprise data asset in both places. And because of the open source nature of Greenplum, we've been able to build connectors that allow us to reach back and get data that's living in Hadoop and really make you know our platform accessible to that data set, even if it's not physically you know first received into Greenplum itself. So really it's you know the, the ability to you know 
uh, integrate with Kafka, integrate with Spark, integrate with HDFS. All of these things have become just a, a tremendous advantage for us to put Greenplum right at the center of that blueprint. Yeah, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about that. Maybe give us a sense of what your the larger analytic and data platform environment looks like. Greenplum being at the center, but you mentioned some other technologies. And of course, there are new technologies evolving and developing all the, all the time that I'm sure you want to take advantage of. Um, give us a sense of what that environment looked like uh, some of the other technologies that you're using in conjunction with Greenplum that really extend your analytic capabilities. Yeah, so we, we do run a Hadoop data store uh, where we are running a lot of Spark, and that's really uh, one of our uh, preferred tools for our decision scientist community. Um, and that's, you know, uh, kind of our main feature set. We also have integrated with uh, Elastic to be able to build out, you know, more of a, a true forecasting type of an application. Um, so uh, really, you know, Greenplum is enabling all of this by giving us this centralized data management and really allowing us to have this uh, ability to get data anywhere quickly, uh, you know, without, you know, uh, a lot of engineering resources having to be spent with how I get data from here to there, right? And so, like, that's really one of the big uh, advantages. So, so where are we going um, from our analytics stack uh, beyond that? I would say that we're really just kind of more looking for more and more ways that we can take advantage of those frameworks that are already in place mm -hmm. and really, again, use, use the tools that we have on the floor to really be able to mine that you know, very deep and very rich data set. Yeah, and, and Sean, I, I saw you kind of made a little bit of a face when I mentioned there's new technologies coming on board all the time. How do you sure. keep up with, with all the pace of change and how do you evaluate you know, new technologies <clears throat> and things you want to try? How do you manage all that? Uh, difficultly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, the, the, you know, when we talk about extensibility, the, we are always investigating new technologies, different technologies for different solutions. Uh, one of the areas where we're evolving uh, and becoming uh, more involved with is in more fast data uh, and, and Lambda style architectures. Um, so uh, the ability to integrate with other technologies quickly, um, you know, again, the extensibility of Greenplum allows us to integrate with these technologies before maybe even Pivotal has thought to start integrating with the technologies and relatively easily uh, without a whole lot of engineering going into it so that we can build out these solutions, prove out that they work uh, and start providing business value faster. We'll run a lot of quick proof of concepts and be able to just demonstrate, hey, functionally this works or it doesn't, right? And you know, don't be afraid to fail. And when you do fail, you don't, be, don't be afraid to fail fast right? and move on to the next thing. And that's, you kind of have to have that mentality to continuously uh, evaluate you know the tech stack is is it's changing so so rapidly. How do you get ROI on that? How do you you know if you put something on the floor today and you know 24 months later it's obsoleted? Well, that's you know it's a tough thing to monetize, right? So really making you know, concentrated bets and technologies that you think have staying power, and that's mm -hmm. again a big part of our overall strategy. And I think something you mentioned uh, struck me was uh, you know having talked to a lot of the, the Pivotal Green Plum team, I know that they look to customers in terms of what are the, some of the things we need to develop in our platform. Sure. Um, you know, sometimes our customers, as you mentioned, you might learn about a new technology before the Green Plum team does, yeah. uh, but then there's some collaboration there and, and working together to figure out how can we make this work uh, for the betterment of our customers. Yeah. That is why we are looking forward to open source, uh, why we, we were so intrigued by it is that, you know, uh, we're willing to take a leap of faith of figuring out what uh, makes sense for us, trying it out, proving it works, uh, giving the feedback to Pivotal. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, those integrations don't exactly make me money. I want to give them back. Uh, I don't want to own them. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but it is, it's exciting for us to be able to have, you know, uh, the ability to contribute back, you know, I mean, so, you know, making the product open source isn't just about us having access to the source code when we want to or, or spinning it up quickly, although those are, you know, both, you know, big advantages in and of themselves, but it's really about, hey, the, you know, the, the challenges that we find ourselves, it's having that community that we can go back to Pivotal and say, hey, here's, you know, here's what we're looking at, here's what we think we should do to build around uh, or, or, or to, to tackle this challenge, and hey, have you guys thought of this, or do you have any other customers? who've thought about this and, and, and do you have a roadmap and we're, we're to tackle this issue and where is this headed? And, and they're very responsive to that. And I know one area that I know that the Pivotal team at large is certainly looking at is uh, containers and container management. Um, Pivotal launched uh, their own container service, PKS, last year. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk, I think, in the, in the larger analytics community about the benefits of containerizing uh, analytical databases. Does that get you excited? Is that something that you think would help you in terms of managing and uh, operating the platform? I, I think it's awesome. It gives us a glimpse into what the future should look like, where we, sh we should be going. Um, 
I, I think that uh, containerization in general is, is it's redefining how we deploy all of our software, whether it be databases, applications, whatever. Um, it, it, it's really redefining the industry and redefining operations. I mean, the platform as a service, you know, is truly being able to provision it, spin it up quickly, spin it down quickly, you know, being able to, uh, you know, make it portable, make it, you know, where, hey, I can take my software assets and I can spin them out in other places that I need to. And it's not always about, oh, I don't need to, you know, I've already provisioned bare metal or where this is going to run. You know, really, it's, you know, the, that, that speed to market again, you know, the ability to say, I, I can put this whole thing in a nice, you know, inside of a container and then actually be able to get that container up and running with very minimal investment and it just leads to a, a tremendous amount of agility to get products to market. But still performant. I mean, th th this is not stuff that, you know, it's new to the industry, right? The, the, what's new to the industry is that um, we're reaching a point where uh, not only does this stuff work, but it works well. Um, and quickly. And quickly. Which is not a, not a uh, is, is it something that you have to have, uh, obviously, sure. at your organization. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, great. Well, guys, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day. I appreciate you uh, coming by, and hopefully we'll have you on again, and we'll hear how your journey continues. Well, thanks Thank for having us. So thanks.